now moving around that we've defined what the states are we've also defined what the actions are so why not just take a problem and solve it up so i'll go with some standard problems and by that we'll also at one place have a look at it um the images are courtesy artificial intelligence a modern approach taken from the standard website thanks to the authors for providing images of it otherwise i would have hated typing all this up so uh, the first problem is called as the air cargo problem it's an international example so you see San Francisco and John F. Kennedy, two wonderful airports. I hate them. So you say that because it is festive season, at least here in India at the time I am recording. So you would like to send a gift to me now that you cannot give it to me in person. So you are at San Francisco and therefore you buy a cargo at San Francisco and it's at San Francisco and there's a thank you card that I would like to send you in advance so there's another cargo which is at John F. Kennedy so how will the cargoes go? You need planes that actually carry the cargo otherwise nobody is going to work so there's also a plane P1 which is at San Francisco and there's another plane which is at John F. Kennedy. So there's an India Post plane at San Francisco and India Post plane at John F. Kennedy. So two cargoes, one at San Francisco and one at John F. Kennedy. Two planes, one at San Francisco and John F. Kennedy. And then of course you have the domain variables here. We'll not care about these because they are atemporal. We'll only care about these. Uh, C1 is a cargo, C2 is a cargo, this is my gift, this is your thank you card, P1 and P2 are planes by the India Post, John F. Kennedy and San Francisco of course are two excellent airports, not really, so what's my goal that I should have my gift at John F. Kennedy and you should have your thank you card at San Francisco uh there are three action schemas there are so many actions so the action schemas are of course this is what we studied so far so for the plane p uh then it was the person now it's a plane to fly from the from airport to the two airport the plane p needs to be at the from airport these are atemporal and the effects it, the plane is no longer at the firm airport, it's at the two airport. Then how does this cargo business hold around? The cargo business holds around by saying that somebody needs to take your cargo, load it onto a plane and somebody needs to take the cargo and unload it at a plane. So this is the action load this is how your thank you card will go into a plane and my gift will also go into a plane so for the cargo c to be loaded at plane p the plane p is at the airport a the cargo c should be at the airport a the plane should also be at the airport a this is just to say that my thank you card at john f kennedy cannot load the be loaded into a plane which is currently at Delhi so cargo should also be at the same airport and plane should also be at the same airport the rest are a temporal C is a cargo P is a plane air is an airport the effect is that cargo C is no longer at the airport it is actually at the plane which is interesting so normally what I would have loved to do is just to like every other lecture say i will write down this problem i will make error then i'll think that oh my god error happened which i know will happen errors are intentionally made and then i correct that up here i've just taken it from the standard textbook um uh, it's weird so I give my thank you card at John F. Kennedy to a gentleman. I say gentleman load it on this airplane by the India Post, which is going to San Francisco. Gentleman says yes, loads it. Now 
technically the thank you card is still at John F. Kennedy. The plane is at John F. Kennedy. However, what you say here is, it says Cargo C is not at John F. Kennedy. Why did this famous book did so? It's wrong. After I load my thank you card at John F. Kennedy, the card is still at John F. Kennedy. Load doesn't mean it's at a different place. Now, if you delete this up, saying that even though the cargo is inside the plane, it is still at John F. Kennedy, it hasn't left the plane and therefore not shouldn't be there. And you first load the cargo with the plane P, so NC, P, and then you fly the plane P from the from airport to the to airport. So the airport, I mean, of course, once the plane flies from John F. Kennedy to San Francisco, the plane is no longer at the John F. Kennedy, it is at San Francisco. So let's do that, what really happens, and why did we take this? I had at C1, which is your thank you card, C2, comma, at John F. Kennedy. So, and of course, there was a plane P2 at John F. Kennedy. And I said to a gentleman, gentlemen, load my thank you card at this plane P2, which is currently at John F. Kennedy. The gentleman says, okay, thank you, sir. The effect is that, of course, there is no change in plane P2, which is still at John F. Kennedy. I have this as the addition, so let me write down the old states back at C2, John F. Kennedy. That's what I said. My thank you card is still at John F. Kennedy. It hasn't changed. And in C2, P, yes, your, my thank you card is inside the plane. It will go. And then I tell the captain, captain, fly. Take my thank you card to these amazing kids so fly p2 from john f kennedy your thank you my thank you card for you is on the way to san francisco it's coming what happens that of course let me first take all these up at so at p comma two will get deleted from here so the first one gets deleted at C2, JFK in C2, P1 and at P, 2, so at P2, SFO. Okay, now there's a problem. When the plane which was carrying my thank you note, it did fly to San Francisco. Now my cargo is at San Francisco. It will be delivered to you after unloading and the last mile delivery, but it's technically at San Francisco. What does AI tell you? It's a John F. Kennedy. So how do you deal with the problem? The moment you say that if the cargo has loaded the plane, when the plane flies, you cannot apply first order logic and say that once the plane lands at San Francisco, every parcel inside that plane will be at San Francisco. Life was very easy if I allow first order logic. I haven't allowed first order logic. And mind you, modeling the problem in a way that first order logic is represented using zeroth order logic primitives only is very difficult. So I had to apply a general rule that when plane flies to San Francisco, every parcel inside that plane is at San Francisco. Very simple first order rule. I did not allow you first order. So what do you say? You apply this trick. The moment cargo has loaded the plane, it's not at John F. Kennedy, which is also internationally technically true. The moment you leave Delhi immigration, you are at no man's land. You're no longer in India. So if you're going to New York, you're not even at the US, you're in no man's land. Same with our cargo. Real life inspiration solves many complex AI problems very easily. So I love this thing around over here. The moment uh, cargo is loaded, it's at no man's land, it's nowhere.
it's inside the plane. In terms of geographical place, it's nowhere. It's at no man's land. Unload is exactly the opposite. So unload the cargo C from the plane P at the airport A. So of course the cargo needs to be inside the plane and the plane needs to be at the airport. And the effect will be that the cargo is at the airport. It is no longer inside the plane. So that's also true. So when you land at US and you get your immigration stamp done, then you move from no man's land out to US. Okay, I'll quickly take in the other two problems taken as a straight example and then we'll do some nice problem solving, of course. So that's the other one that's called as the flat tire problem. Very quickly. So I have a flat tire. I also have a spare tire. Currently, the flat tire is at the axle. That's why my vehicle cannot move. And the spare tire is at the trunk. So, of course, I'll go to the trunk. I'll take my spare tire out and I'll replace the two tires. So, my goal condition is that my spare tire needs to be at the axle so that I can start driving. <coughs> the actions are, of course, remove. So, in order to remove the object tire from the location of the tire the object tire needs to be at the location of the tire and of course the effect is the object is no longer the object tire is no longer at the location it is instead on the ground ground is not a variable it's actually a ground variable it's just a symbol so the moment you remove an object you just keep it onto the ground perfect there's a problem like that. You just take out something and put it onto the ground. Uh, the put on is of course exactly the opposite. So where do you put on? You just put on on the axle. So again, axle is a ground variable. This one is what can be substituted. This cannot be substituted. So T of course needs to be a tire. Not everything will go into the axle. Like don't say put on Rahul Kala on the axle. So T needs to be on the ground. To, to put on something, you lift it from the ground and you'll put on. So the flat tire cannot be on the axle and the spare tire cannot be on the axle. Now this is again something which is interesting. Very briefly, I had to write in order to put something on the axle. Nothing needs to be on the axle. So what I actually had to write down over here was that not at x comma axle for all x but you know i do not allow you first order logic i do not allow you first order logic so you have to deal with this uh, the effects of course are the tire t is underground and it's not at the ground it's on the axle so you picked it up onto the ground and put it on the axle uh, there's a leave overnight uh, you know it's Prayagraj, it comes under Uttar Pradesh. Okay, nothing personal to any government or place. <laughs> if you leave anything overnight, like in hostels, without your room locked, you know what happens. It's Uttar Pradesh, everything gets stolen. So the thieves have no precondition. The thieves are not like Sunday is a off. Monday we don't work. Whenever you leave everything off offline, the thieves take away your spare tire from the ground, they take away your spare tire from the axle, they take away your spare tire from the trunk, they also take in the flat tire from wherever it is. So they take away everything, uh, which is weird, why would somebody steal a flat tire, but people do take that away. Uh, uh, this is the favorite one of mine, it's called as a Blocks World. The mid-semester question of programming, well, of course, as a classic search, was inspired by this problem. So this is my blocks and this is how I need to get it and I can move one block at a time. The table has infinite capacity. So initially A is on the table, B is on the table, C is on A, A is on table, B is on table, C is on A. A, B and C are block. 
B has nothing on top of it, C has nothing on top of it, and of course, stable has things on top of it, but just to say it has infinite capacity. So, clear is something on which, clear, clear B means you can put something on top of B. So, clear B means I can put something on top of B, clear C means I can put something on top of C, clear table means I can put something on top of table. Uh, don't take it that it's only 3, it's actually infinite at both directions. Um, the goal is C should be on table, B should be on C, A should be on B. Uh, the actions are of course move B, X, Y. So in order to move the block B from the X to Y, B should be on X, B should not have anything on top of it, Y should not have anything on top of it, B should be a block, Y should be a block, and of course all of them needs to be distinctive. I'll just take an example, maybe that clarifies. So here I say move C from A to B. So in order to move C from A to B on top of A to B, C needs to be have nothing on top of it so that I cannot pick up A. B should not have anything on top of A so I cannot put anything on top of A. So here both these needs to be free and not only both of them needs to be free, C should be on top of A. So these are the three conditions. C is free, B is free, C is clear, B is clear and C is over A. The effect is of course that this block moves and this one becomes clear. And table is a little bit differently. So if I need to move the block B on the table, which is currently at X, so B is on X initially, B should be clear so that I can move it and both of them need to be at the top and the effect will be B will be on the table, X will get clear and B will no longer be on X. So this is as an example saying, move to table, C comma table. So C should be clear, it should not have anything on top of it and C should be currently over A. Mm, move to table C comma A. Yeah. Uh, the effect will of course be that C will become will come on the table and this thing A will get clear. Now Again, the interesting fact over it is that if I would have given this problem to you at the tutorial exactly the same way that I did it initially, I said let's model the block world problem, you would not come up with these variables and let's have one place where this variable comes in which is move b from x to y all you would have said, the precondition is that, of course, B should be on X. However, you should would have said, instead of B is clear, you would have said, there does not exist a Y such that on... And this thing is same as saying it's clear B. Now this is first order logic and this is a zeroth order logic. I do encourage you to, without taking clear, model the problem. See if you get a first order logic and then see how taking one redundant variable. The variable is redundant by the way. Clear can be defined by all on X comma Y. Clear is definitely redundant. This is a very interesting example about how you could take a redundant variable and using a redundant variable convert a first order logic into a zeroth order logic. So clear B has a definition based on the on functions, but I used clear B because I wanted a zeroth order logic instead of a first order logic